Hey neighbor, we're on a quest to help you be successful growing your own plants. And today we're going to be talking about grow lights. A lot of people have issues with spindling plants and understanding grow lights. Today I hope we clear up some of that misinformation or maybe help you understand how they work and why you should use them and the purpose of them a little bit better. Well, if you've ever been down that journey and you spent so much time to make sure that your seeds germinated by, I mean germinated, I mean they sprouted and they started coming up, and then you got those leggy plants, you knew how frustrating it can be. And uh, we get a lot of emails during the springtime of people having those problems. And the reality is once you get those leggy plants, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Sometimes I'll tell people to try to salvage them, but plant them a backup uh, crop in case because 90% of the time those leggy plants do not make it. There's a simple solution not to have leggy plants and to have good healthy seedlings and that comes into play with grow lights. Now if you've got a greenhouse outside really none of this is going to pertain to you but if you don't have a greenhouse and you still want to grow plants this will pertain to you and there is easy simple affordable ways for you to be able to grow your seedlings indoors and we're going to go over some of those today and at the end i'm also going to give you a hack of how you could do it yourself if you're one of those do-it-yourself kind of people that always like to do it yourself and brag about how cheap you can do it hey there's a way to do it and i'm going to show you there at the end all right the first one i want to show you today is the indoor growing kit that we got now this is going to be kind of a product demonstration but also i'm going to pepper in information there about the grow lights and how they work so you can be successful using grow lights whether you're using our system or not this is what we call our kitchen grow light system right here. And let me explain to you first, we only use LED lights. I made a decision when we started carrying grow lights not to carry the fluorescent, the T5 lights, and we only carry these. Now that, that gets us because of price point. If you go shopping for grow lights, you're gonna find cheaper grow lights out there from us because those T5 or those fluorescent lights are out there everywhere, and it's a good bit lower price point than the LED lights. But all of our systems have the LED lights and I would highly recommend you go in the LED regardless where you buy them from. A couple reasons for that. These LEDs are gonna last a long, long time. I've been selling and using these systems for over five years now and I have never yet have a light go out on me. The uh, long of use or how long these things last is purely amazing. And you, we have a lot of people ask, do we sell replacement lights? Well, the answer is yes, no. We don't have them on our website. And the reason we don't have them on our website is there's no, no call for them. Nobody ever orders a replacement light because they last and last and last. Now, if you do need one, it happens to get broke or something like that. If you'll email customer service, we got all parts for all of these that we sell. We'll be glad to sell your replacement part. But the reality is if you get an LED light, more likely it could outlast you. Number two is heat. These LEDs don't put off hardly any heat and the old fluorescent lights put off a lot of heat. And for me, two things, that's a safety issue because you could catch something on fire if you got it too close to it. A lot of people use books and things like that to prop their lights up. If you're a do-it-yourself kind of guy, that can be dangerous because you get that light too close to something that could catch fire, boom, there you have it heat if you get those regular fluorescent lights too close to your plants they put off too much heat you can burn your plants so i'm a huge believer in led and everything i'm going to be talking about today is led lights all right back to our smallest system right here and this is our kitchen garden system now this right here is ideal for you guys out there that don't have a lot of room you can set this on your countertop you can set it pretty much anywhere and you can grow your plants all right these pots right here were made for this system also this right here that we sell was made for this particular system as well and when you buy this kit you actually get four of these in it but these led lights are underneath there on this kitchen system you got one of these lights and it is you see those screws right there it is attached up in there now the difference in these led grow lights and maybe going to the hardware store and just buying the light is this aluminum housing right here that houses the light right there has a dome on there. And this is what most people don't get about grow lights is, is the dome there focuses the light down on the plant. Or if you went and got you a regular LED light from the store that was going to a light fixture on a ceiling, it is designed to diffuse that light everywhere. 
unlike a grow light. A grow light is designed with domes on there to diffuse the light just on that plant tray right there. So on this particular one, one which is plenty sufficient underneath there, and it provides light to these right here. We also have these little bars on the side right there that we can use to adjust the height of the light. Now, when you're germinating your seeds or growing your uh, plants, to germinate a seed, you do not need light. In fact, it's just opposite. You're probably better off if you don't put light on them. Some of them germinate better in the dark. We want to cover those seeds in our seed starting tray. And if you, you don't know about germination mats and all that, watch this video right here. We explain it pretty good in that. But you don't need grow lights for germination. But the second that plant pops through and you see any green, at that moment, you're going to have to give it light, whether it be supplemental light, like this grow lights, or natural light outside. So when you first see that first hint of green, you want to get them underneath a grow light if you're growing inside there. And you probably want to lower your light down pretty close to the plant right there. Now, it's not detrimental with these LED grow lights that you get it real, real close. And I normally recommend somewhere between four or five inches to start with there. As the plant grows, you simply just loosen these little screws on the side and raise it up. Now, if they is a weak part of this system right here, it is these little things right here on the side. There we go. So I got it lifted up there and I'm gonna screw it back down, tighten back down. But you'll see these right here. That's probably the weakest part on this right here. Uh, these things are made out of plastic and if you over tighten them, you can break them. So you just want to snug that down so it doesn't move up and down. And if you happen to break one, don't worry about it. We got them in stock. We send them out to you, so any big deal. That's the only thing that we normally have to replace on these things is these little knobs right here. And it's simply by people tightening them up too much and breaking them. So back to this right here. Raise it up as your plants get bigger and bigger, taller and taller. Do the same thing. Just raise on up. Now, if I wasn't on camera right here, this would happen real easy here. Let's see if I can do it this way. There we go. Then tighten it back down. Right there. And then you have it. The bigger your plant gets, the more you want to raise this right here. One of these in there works fine. We got an on and off switch right there, so we could turn it on and turn it off. Now, besides using these trays right here, and I mainly use these trays just to grow uh, indoor plants such as lettuces and things like that. You see these lettuces right here? I got them in a different tray, but I use these little trays sometimes to grow those kind of things. The girls around here like to use them to grow the microgreens. I think there's a better option than that, but that's what they like to use. When you're doing seed starting, you can use this 12 cell tray right here and it fits perfectly inside that. Now that's about as big a tray as you can get for this seed starting kit that we call the kitchen like it. We have domes for those. Now the domes are mainly used to increase your uh, humidity so that your seeds germinate. I don't like using domes once I put them underneath the light. I think it's uh, going to do more damage than it's good. So I don't use a, a dome with my grow lights. But you have this right here. You can do it two different ways. You can use a catch pan as this one right here or you could just simply put that insert down on the kitchen system right here because it's got what we call a wicking mat and it's got a reservoir underneath there to catch any excess water. So if you are growing in your kitchen and you put too much water in there, it catches underneath there, it can wick it back up with this wicking pad right here. Doesn't cause any mess, keeps everything clean and nice. So there we have our kitchen grow light system. Moving over to the Step up is going to be our indoor grow light system, which is almost identical to the other ones, except it's bigger there. Same thing, you loosen these things right here, up, these little screws up, lift it up and down. You got the wicking pad inside there. You got the little stand that keeps them off from the standing water in there. These things work great. Now what this does is this gives you more options as far as what you can put in there. 
If you're limited on space or you're just getting started, hey, go with the kitchen grow light system. If you want to step it up and grow more plants and maybe grow more microgreens and lettuces indoors, but you're still limited on room, this is a good option right here. Here again, this one has two LED lights. These are a little bit bigger than the one that goes in our kitchen system right there. Our kitchen system, see, do you see the difference right there? This one's almost twice as long. They are two of these underneath here, screwed to the bottom of this dome right here. There again, it has the aluminum housing there that focuses that light down onto the plants that doesn't diffuse them out. So there we have this right here. Now I'm gonna show you what all you can use as far as size wise inside these trays right here. We've got one, two, three, four, five of these small trays right here. Got plenty of room for that. Let's see what else will fit underneath there. Well, here's our 24 cell seed starting kit and it will fit underneath there fine. There again, we've got the dome, but we're not gonna use the dome once we start using our grow lights. We have this, we have the catch pan underneath there or we can use it just like that right there. That's probably my favorite method right there. Now, once I get the plants on up, I will put them outside of something. This, this right here, this bottom tray is important and it's real handy. But for this right here, I'm not, I'm not real keen about using that. I like for it to sit down on my wicked mat right there. So we actually have room. We could put a 24 cell there and one of these small trays right here. Let's see right here if our 12 cell was sitting underneath there. Yep. So we could put a 24 cell and a 12 cell underneath there and still have enough light there. So theoretically with this system right here, you could start 36 plants right there. Well, the industry standard here in the United States on most trays, what we call the 1020 trays. And these are 10 wide and 20 long. And this right here, this system right here is perfect for those 10, 20 trays. I believe this insert we have right here has got 50 in there. So you could use this indoor light kit, perfect, perfect size for those 10, 20 trays, regardless what sale size you, uh, you decide to go with. Now this is probably my favorite system right here. We, can't, we call this the hang and grow light system and you can do a lot more with it. If you're kind of like me and you grow a big garden and you really enjoy growing things, this here's the system for you to go with. You need more room for this, but it's still, it didn't cost that much to get it all set up and it works really, really good. So here is our hang and grow light system right here. And here is the aluminum housing that comes with the LED light here. You get two of these with the hang and grow light system, but you also get all the hardware to make everything happen like you see I've got it right here. You get the hangers, you get all the cords and you get this nice little thing right here so you can raise or lower your light simply by using your thumb right there. Now, we do not sell this baker's rack right here. These baker racks, this is a metal one right here. I can't remember if I got this from Amazon or one of the big box stores, but they all sell them. I'm not fond of the plastic ones, but these metal ones work really good. This is the black one here. You can also get them in chrome. I prefer the black right here, but kind of kind of matches everything else. These baker racks right here work perfect for setting you up a seed starting station. And with these hanging grow light kits right here, you can do a lot of different things with these. Now, the one that I have right here has one, two, three, four shelves. And I've got hanging grow lights set up on every one of them there. So I can run three different shelves germinate, I mean not germinate, but growing my seedlings out there, or growing microgreens or less, whatever. I leave my top one open so that I can put my supplies up there. These things have these little hooks on there and you just simply hook it in. You can set one of these up, heck, probably 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, easy to set up there. On these brackets right here that the lights attach to, you can move those into several different positions. Let's just say that you was growing little bitty trays. You can set these lights up and they fit inside this group right here and you can move them in or move them out. I don't do that. I set them in one place there and I leave them. The way I have mine set up is I'm one inside on every one. So I'm one inside. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. There is four different settings or places you could put this aluminum on your uh, 
your little bracket right there on each side there. So there's a lot of different things you can do there. I have found this works pretty good for me. The great thing about these grow lights is we have room to use our prop tech trays. Our prop tech trays will not work on the grow lights, whether it be the kitchen or the indoor seed starting kit. They will work wonderful underneath this right here and you got plenty of room there. Here's a 162 right there. Fits just fine underneath there. So we got room for that. Or if we wanted to do 1020s, we could do a 1020 and have a little room left over to do a couple of these smaller trays right there. So there's a lot of things you can do there. Now on this particular system, this is where that bottom tray without the holes is going to come in handy because we don't want necessarily to, uh, you know, have water dripping down, making a mess here. Most people are going to put this inside. So that's where I would use my bottom trays with this Baker rack, rack system right here. So let's talk about how long do you need to leave these lights on? Well, I've done some testing with that where I turned them on and turned them off at 10, 12 hour in increments, or I've left them on 24 seven. I cannot tell a difference the way the plants respond, whether you turn these lights off during night or you leave them on 24 seven. I don't think the plant cares, but if you want to save that electricity and you don't want those lights running 24 seven, we sell this simple timer and you can get them about anywhere right here. And this thing is not digital, it's plain Jane, which is all we need. You just kind of pull it up right there, set when you want those lights to come on, come off. You got a plug in right there and a plug in right there and it works great. I don't use these a lot. I do use them occasionally, but uh, you do have that options. But I found it really didn't diff make a difference to the plant. Now you can get into these smaller systems like our kitchen or our indoor grow light system for a hundred bucks or so. Really economical to get into something like that that's well made and it's gonna work for a long period of time. This system here, this bigger system here, time you get through with all the hanging grow lights and the baker's rack, you could have a few hundred dollars tied up in it. But this is where I wanna to touch on something. You know, you've got a few hundred dollars tied up in a grow light system or maybe just a hundred dollars tied up in a, to a smaller grow light system. Try to utilize it more than just the times of year when you're starting seeds for your spring or your fall garden. We typically use our grow light systems more in the spring than we do any other time of year. Instead of it just sitting bare for the rest of the year and not using it, try growing microgreens or even try growing your indoor lettuces inside on these grow lights. They do wonderful. This is something we started doing a few years ago is in the wintertime when the weather's so nasty outside, we grow our microgreens and we grow our lettuces. Isn't this pretty butterhead lettuce right there? I cut one of them a couple of nights ago right there, had me a nice salad here. But these things do a wonderful job of growing these lettuces. You can grow arugula, you can grow all kinds of things indoors when the weather is nasty outside. And you can utilize that investment that you have made in these grow lights year round. All right, I promised you a little nugget for you, for you do-it-yourselfers out there. If you're one of those kind of people that just want to do it bare bones and get by as cheap as possible, this is what you can do. Go buy you some LED lights, and there again, you can buy the, the fluorescent lights cheaper. You can take you some coat hangers, you can take you some books, you can take you anything and jerry-rig you a system up so that you can move these lights up and down and kind of use them for germinating your plants. Will it work? Absolutely it will work. You can do that and you can manually move these things up and down however you want to do it. Coat hanger, chain, laying books up there, whatever you want to do. But if you use those LED lights, you don't have to be worried about the heat. And, and, and it will work, no doubt about that. If you're not one of those kind of people that want to go through all that, for the money difference, in my opinion, just buy you a system and be done with it. Buy you a grow light system. But here's the key, folks. Don't be intimidated by grow lights. Grow lights will work wonderful if you don't have a greenhouse or you don't have the ability to grow them outside and you still want to grow your plants, need a grow light to have those nice, healthy plants that's not spindly, and you can use this to grow your food just about year round.